J. Blige turned 50 years old. We're all old now. Mary J. Blige is absolutely my favorite artist of all time. And I know a lot of people say, well, she sings the same song over and over again. Most people sing the same fucking song over and over again. That's why they're famous. There are two instances in my life where my fanaticism really came to the forefront and kind of made me be like, oh, man, what are you doing? The first instance happened in 2008. My friend Akona treated me to a Mary J. Blige concert in Amsterdam. Mind you, this is back when I was smoking all the weed. When I went to Amsterdam, I think I was sober once. And that was the day I got there. I don't remember anything leading up to when she hit the stage, but as soon as she hit the stage, I lost my motherfucking mind. I'm on the balcony. That's the first story, a couple years later. Mary had come out with something. She had come out with another uh, album. Uh, I'm old. Album, CD, whatever the fuck you call them. She came out with one. It was new music. She was on a radio station. So she was talking about the new album. And I'm in my office, supposed to be doing work, but I'm like, man, fuck these people. They was like, well, if you'd like to talk to Mary today, just give us a call. Like, da -da 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 -da. As soon as they said give us a call, I picked the phone up, dialed that number so fast, and somebody answered the phone, and I was like, hello, Mary? 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 And they were like, no, this isn't Mary. You'll have to call back. My whole face just dropped, because it was like, dumbass. You could have talked to her if you didn't sound like such a stalker. So when I do get to meet Mary, I'm going to be so cool. I'm going to be like, oh, hey, Mary, how you doing? Good to meet you. As soon as I leave, I'm going to hit the floor and be like, oh, Jesus. I wrote this, and I was still in pain. I'm not this angry anymore. It took me a long time not to be this angry, but I'm definitely not this angry anymore. And I used Mary's song titles to craft the poem. And I think I honestly did write it on her birthday of that year. So I wrote this in January, 2018. Real love, <laughs> blame it on intoxication, baby. Because now you remind me of a sweet thing that turns sour hours after I, I, I can't get you off my mind. Told you time after time, I can love you better than you love yourself. But as I reminisce on the love I never had, it becomes painfully sad knowing that I need to be without you. For you're in no condition to love me or be happy with my love. My heart was the beat till you bring me joy until I rose to my feet and cut the music off, listening to the chaos of your emptiness. It was like a love, no limit, with restrictions. And your cruelty was my conviction, a death sentence over my life that no one else could inflict except you. Had I known Mary was warning me in song not to take that midnight drive to Mr. Wrong, I would have listened the first time and would have been just fine. Because when someone shows you who they are the first time, believe them. And I don't mind telling you I found my everything when you left. He was in the mirror waiting with bated breath. And all that I can say is that those rainy days will give way to everything I need to set me free. You probably think you broke me. I'm not going to cry. I've done enough crying because of your lying. I'm trying my hardest not to find you and kick your ass. But you don't have to worry. In time, the anger will pass because I don't want to do anything else but heal myself and steal away to a place with no more drama or crazy games. And even if it takes a whole damn year to get used to the changes I've been going through, I'll do it for me. It will be my therapy. I can't leave without doing the dance.